We're on our way to Pickers Field in a Drake Cutlass Blue, and as you know, all good ships have a name, so I decided to call this one... It's been 84 years. ...since our last epic space adventure, and this destroyed Hercules has dropped so much RMC that we're gonna wait for the owner to return and... Oh well, never mind. I guess we'll talk about how Star Citizen 3.23 is slowly adding more mechanics that are more game and less sim. Whether you love or hate scope glint, procedural recoil, dynamic crosshairs, or how master modes is totally changing the way we fly, manage, and engage our ships, I find myself asking the most important hypothetical question of our the next generation. Agreed. If you could add five things to Star Citizen as it exists today to make it more of a game, more engaging, more regularly playable, what would they be? This is a hypothetical question which means it's based on copium, not facts. So let's pretend developing a massively multiplayer online simulation first person universe space game is easy for the next eight minutes and won't take another ten years. I asked this question on a post on YouTube to boost channel engagement, I mean to compare your answers to my indisputably perfect list. So let's begin. This number here is the server FPS. When this number high, game good. When this number low, game bad. We've all heard the legends of how your dad's second cousin, twice removed, logged into Star Citizen one day and ended up on a server with only three other players and managed to experience five minutes and 12 seconds of pure hyper-responsive server bliss. And the legends are true. When you win the server lottery, your epic space gamer mouse becomes the supple breast of a well-endowed space angel. The game is smooth, everything works and the NPCs act like any other NPCs from literally any other game and something whispers in the back of your mind. God fucking damn do we need server meshing and whatever other server side performance enhancing drugs that devs can get their hands on. Literally nothing else matters if the game constantly degrades as time goes on and the server you're on screeches to a grinding halt as the hamster spinning the wheel dies of a massive pulmonary contusion. No one wants to play a barely functional desynchronous mess and no one outside of the star citizen cult, I mean community, will take this game seriously until we get a consistently playable experience. A number of months ago, the first static server meshing tests were performed with very positive results, and I cannot help but feel that this year's the year, right? Like, come on, come on, man, it, it's, it's gotta be. Please. <laughs> Back in the before times, in the long long ago, at its peak, Jumptown 2.0 was basically the best and most organic way to experience everything that Star Citizen was capable of. The insane gameplay possibilities when spaceship, ground vehicle and feet FPS gameplay all came together surrounding a common goal, acquiring and selling maze. The game had never been more fun. So number two on this list of what could make Star Citizen more of an actual game would be a new kind of gold rush. Something that isn't an event that gets turned on every couple of months, but rather something consistently available that has a location that changes, providing a commodity or resource node that is consistently valuable to players, offering that high risk, high reward gameplay that many like myself would really appreciate. We've seen attempts in the past to create this type of gameplay, from the SPK rework to Ghost Hollow to Wake of Disaster, but ultimately the lack of incentive and I believe the static nature of these locations tend to give them a short shelf life of general player interest. It's arguable whether credits are enough to drive players to a gold rush in the first place, and then the conversation inevitably leans towards reputation-based rewards like gear, skins, and cosmetics. But whatever form that incentive takes, it would make the game more of a game if we had something that really encouraged us to go to a specific location and murder each other and fight epic space adventure wars over something we all actually really care about. The absolute best and most incredible idea I've heard for this type of content came from £10.42. Definitely check him out for Star Citizen performance related and other content, who suggested CIG create a virgin, untouched star system with absolutely no space stations, no cities and no landing pads, and allowed players to access it. This could be a small system, one planet even, with a ridiculously precious and valuable mineable or resource node of some kind, and then just let players sandbox the absolute shit out of it. 
I'm not Warren Buffett, but holy fuck does our ludicrous space game need some kind of economy. Even if it's just a weekly reshuffling of the prices of commodities to keep things vaguely interesting and shake up the trading meta of a given patch cycle. A good example is the 3.22 salvage meta. It's great that construction materials became more valuable than the blood of God to incentivize Vulture and reclaim a testing of the new salvage mechanics, but if they could manually change the prices of literally anything every two weeks or so to diversify gameplay, I think that could go a long way to keep players engaged, at least until we get some form of real, re-evaluated and working economy. Traders would appreciate a change of scenery and pirates wouldn't backspace themselves out of sheer boredom because they've just quantum interdicted their 26th reclaimer within the last three hours. Hopefully the point 0.1 patch after 3.23's release with cargo missions and more interesting stuff to do at the distribution centers will give us some of this, but anything to help the economy or lack thereof would be great. I find myself logging into Star Citizen on a regular basis, loading up a Cutlass Blue or a Mantis and flying around the system looking for fragile ITC space traders to exploit for 5 seconds of content only to experience an utter ghost hollow town no matter where we go. No one is doing anything, anywhere, 99% of the time and then I open up the comms to see a full server of 99 other ludicrous space game enjoyers and I ask myself, what the f*** are you all doing? Where the f*** are all of you? So number four on this list is long range scanning. We've had some brief mention of probes and how they might form some kind of gameplay loop to gather information about stuff happening far away from wherever you are, but since then I don't think we've been told much. Ultimately what I think will make Star Citizen more playable, engaging and fun would be some mechanic, be that long range scanning or otherwise, to gather information on what the f*** is actually going on around the system, so that you can actually find the type of gameplay you want to do in the first place. It's piracy. I want a gameplay loop to find targets for piracy. And last on my list of this totally not filler voidy vid while I wait to actually get into some good 3.23 gameplay experiences to translate into content, money sinks. In-game ship prices are skyrocketing in the looming slash already here 3.23 patch and I believe that the more money sinks we have and the more expensive that they are, the better. A wipe is not looking likely for 3.23 and from patch cycle to patch cycle, the average star citizen finds themselves absolutely drowning in Scrooge McDuck levels of credits and this already pretty meaningless currency becomes even more meaningless. So the last item on this list would be to make absolutely everything more expensive from repairs to refueling to cruise lux, and then on top of that, make insurance claims have a base premium cost that goes up every time you need to reclaim your ship. CIG have in the past increased the timers to claim ships, which basically set the community on fire for a while. And while I believe this was a step in the right direction, I feel that a consistently increasing and serious cost to your basic claim, not the expedited claim, every time you need to claim a ship would make for a great money sink, equivalent to literally any other game. Dying should cost you. Dying in succession should cost you more. Speaking of dying, they should make it an insanely high cost for all the 3D meat printers littered throughout Stanton. Respawning should cost an arm and a leg, and I feel this would be a good middle ground before we start seeing whatever the hell this is going to be come into the game. Thank you channel patrons and channel members for all your support. Your incredible generosity continues to blow me away. Thinking of pledging to this ludicrous space game, then use one of the referral codes on screen now for a free 5,000 starting credits. If you enjoy my content and are interested in supporting the channel beyond a like and a subscribe, check the links in the description. Consider the join button below and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash voidude. Your continued support genuinely helps me to continue producing these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around the verse. Cheers.